What if I told you that a team had to play their opponents in their opponents' jerseys? You've heard about Bountygate, Bullygate, and of course, Spygate, which rocked the football world in 2007. But there was another scandal that happened that year, one you might not remember. It took place over just a few hours, and even 15 years later, we still don't know who was responsible for this heist. This is the story of Jerseygate, a mystery that presents more questions than answers. And that's coming up right after this. The holidays are great, aren't they? Unless you're talking about your diet and eating healthy, cause then they suck. You can have your one day to indulge, but after that, it's time to get back to work. That's where Factor comes in. With Factor, healthy, delicious meals are delivered right to your door with no prep and no mess. Plus they cut out stressful meal planning and tedious shopping trips. And when things get hectic during the holidays, you can change your order up every week or pause and reschedule when you're out of town. Factor now offers 34 different meals per week and 36 plus add-on options like smoothies, juices, and snacks. You want a complete dietary system, whether it's keto, calorie smart, chef's choice, protein plus, vegan or veggie, it's all here and all easy. So after this video, head to go.factor75.com slash 5.60 and use code 5.60 to get 60% off your first box. Again, that's go.factor75.com slash 5.60 from the link below and use code 5.60 to get 60% off your first box. It was Thursday, November 1st, 2007, just a day after Halloween. Frank Beamer's 6-2 Virginia Tech Hokies were ranked number 11 in the country. They had lost games to LSU and Boston College, two of the best teams in the country. Yeah, Boston College. The Hokies were playing hard-nosed defensive football, top three in the country, aided by a secondary featuring NFL caliber defensive backs Brandon Flowers and Cam Chancellor. And on offense, they were led by future pros Eddie Royal and Tyrod Taylor, who split time with fellow QB Sean Glennon. More importantly, they were giving their community a reason to come together and heal in the wake of an unthinkable tragedy. When the Hokies took the field in Blacksburg for the first time following the tragedy, they did so in front of a crowd that was raw and emotional even four and a half months later. Frank Beamer's squad was united, together, and they delivered a cathartic victory over East Carolina. Two months later, the Hokies had traveled to Georgia to play the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, who boasted some NFL talent themselves in wide receiver Demarius Thomas and linebacker Philip Wheeler, among a few other soon-to-be pros. Virginia Tech quarterback Sean Glennon, yeah, you might remember his brother, who's an actual giraffe, was interviewed about this game by SportsWar.com in 2018. Sean was milling around the team hotel, getting ready to head to the stadium for pregame warmups when team official John Balian, when team official John Balian, sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, asked him a strange question. Balian asked Glennon if his parents would be at the game, particularly his mom. And John's intentions were pure, unlike Zach Wilson's. When Glennon's mom came to his game, she wore one of her son's away uniforms in the stands. Normally this wouldn't be of any importance to the team staff, save for for one little twist. Moments later, Glennon showed up to the Virginia Tech locker room, but his white number seven jersey was missing, gone, without a trace. And Glennon wasn't the only Hokie whose jersey had completely vanished. Cam Chancellor, Brandon Flowers, and Tyrod Taylor were all sans top. Yeah, some of the best players on the team. Sounds a little suspicious, doesn't it? It was Thursday night, just a few hours until kickoff, and the jerseys hadn't been seen since Wednesday. Fortunately, the Hokies, whose jerseys were gone with the wind, weren't really sweating it. As Glennon remembered, there wasn't much to sweat. Maybe the jerseys were still with an equipment manager. But then more time elapsed, and it was clear. The jerseys were gone. The plan. Now, the Hokies had to ask themselves, what? are they going to do? Well, there were a couple avenues. First of all, the team was calling some boosters who might have the means to get some backup jerseys from Blacksburg to Atlanta before the game began. That is 448 miles away. But in the meantime, their equipment manager came up to Taylor, Flowers, Chancellor, and Glennon with an interesting proposition. And a kind of an insane one at that. They were gonna wear Georgia Tech's jerseys, their Russell Brand white practice jerseys, outlined with golden navy trim to be exact. Quite the departure from the Hokies red and orange, but what other choice did they have? They couldn't just go out there in their pads. 
They may have been wearing the enemy's uniforms, but these four players were going to make some alterations to swag out the Yellow Jackets practice jerseys, as Glennon recalled. As these Hokies gave their jerseys their own personal flair, the tone in the locker room moved from frustrated to comical. They blacked out the words Yellow Jackets on the chest and drew the signature Nike swoosh over the Russell logo. Finally, they sharpied their last names on the back of the jerseys in their own lowercase handwriting, truly making the jerseys their own. Fortunately, none of them were pre-med and you can actually read their handwriting. For Glennon, this was a bit of a surreal moment. He thought he might be wearing a Yellow Jackets jersey his whole collegiate career. His two college choices were Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech. He could have shipped down to Atlanta and run Chan Gailey's offense prior to the triple option and thrown the ball to some guy named Calvin Johnson. But while Glennon had finally opted to become a Hokie, the irony of now donning a Yellow Jackets jersey was not lost on him. And when he finally took the field, he played with a loose confidence, even in the opposite team's getups. The 22-year-old quarterback had perhaps the most complete game of his college career, completing 22 of his 32 passes for 296 yards and three total touchdowns, including a 71-yarder to wide receiver Josh Morgan. All this while starting and completing the entire game with the Georgia Tech practice jersey on his back. That wasn't the case for Chancellor and Flowers, however. Virginia Tech was able to fly in replacement jerseys, finding one for everyone but Glennon. So let me get this straight. A university just flew jerseys to the game. Like what, first class or something? Is our academic institutions, nonprofit, what the hell? Tyrod Taylor said thanks but no thanks and wore his makeshift jersey for the rest of the game. Solidarity amongst the quarterbacks. The Hokies walked off the field with a 27 to three victory. Glennon told ESPN sideline reporter Aaron Andrews that it was fun to beat a team in their own jerseys. He also noted that the craziness and mystery of the missing jerseys calmed some of his pregame jitters and likely contributed to his excellent game under center. After all, the game was nationally broadcast as a standalone ESPN Thursday night game. So the wardrobe situation took some of the pressure off. Still interesting how a lot of us have forgotten about this game. The game was over, but now the mystery had begun. Who stole the Virginia Tech jerseys? How did they do it and why? The jerseys were kept in a room that was not only locked, but covered inch to inch with surveillance cameras. Both Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech reviewed the surveillance footage and found absolutely nothing. Given the status of the players whose jerseys were stolen, it's not hard to figure out a clear motive. It was pretty obvious that this theft was not just a prank, it was sabotage. Stealing every jersey might risk having the game postponed or even canceled, but nabbing four marquee players' jerseys might just hamstring the favored Hokies and give Georgia Tech a chance at victory. Of course, it didn't work out that way. The Thieves didn't account for their own school's cooperation and the calming effect it had on Virginia Tech's starting quarterback. Glennon, however, has a theory regarding what happened in the 24 hours prior to the game. In his interview, he theorized that since the away locker rooms were connected to one of Georgia Tech's non-football weight rooms, another student athlete must have snuck in and grabbed the jerseys during a workout. According to Glennon, a few students were seen at Halloween parties the next day wearing the missing jerseys. That may very well have been the case, but whoever took the jerseys must have managed to unlock the door, slip past security, and somehow complete the theft without showing up on video tape. Skills beyond what you'd expect out of a mere college student, especially if you remember how stupid you were back in college. But even 15 years later, we don't have any answers to the questions that linger. No one has received any punishment nor come forward with an admission, but it's still hard to say whether the crime was worth it. As for the Hokies who were forced to wear Georgia Tech jerseys, some ended up going on to have long, illustrious careers. Sean Glennon briefly spent time with the Minnesota Vikings as an undrafted free agent, but now he's a mortgage broker in Northern Virginia. We know about Tyrod Taylor, who's in his 11th year in the NFL as a backup for Daniel Jones with the Giants. You might remember a video we did about him. Brandon Flowers, not the singer for the Killers, went on to a Pro Bowl in Kansas City and played a full nine seasons in the NFL for the Chiefs and the Chargers. And Cam Chancellor was a two-time second team All-Pro in Seattle and won Super Bowl 48 with the Seahawks, setting the tone with a giant hit on the late Demarius Thomas, who, by the way, was playing for Georgia Tech on that Thursday night in 2007. And about that night, well, we may never have the answers to what happened. But like Sean Glennon said, Virginia Tech managed to beat another team in their own jerseys. And that's gotta feel 
pretty darn good. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, comment, and if you made it this far, you might as well subscribe. I'm Five Points Vids, and you made it to my next video.